that we want it to be known completely. But uh, sign that. So that's a good that's a good petition for children of God to do. The churches we need to bind together. The time uh, for the children of God to stay out of the political arena that's long past. Listen, it's time for you to get involved in what's going on, because anyone with a liberal agenda is stepping up, and they are liberal activists are forcing their agendas. You need, as the children of God, to stand up, contend for the faith. Contend for the faith. Amen. Go ahead and stand with me tonight. Welcome to everyone that's watching us on Facebook and YouTube or whatever forum again that you've decided to join us on. We're glad you're in God's house with us tonight. Look over at your neighbor and tell them, say, I was the best looking person here until you got here. There you go. There you go. Welcome again to our online audience. We're going to remind you. Go ahead and take your phones out. If you're in here tonight or if you're watching online, go ahead and take your phones out. We want you to go ahead and share service if you don't mind. Just get the live stream out as far as it can go. So take a minute or two and do that while we're getting started. Uh, Also, just a reminder to those that are watching online, if we want you to send in your prayer request and also send in your praise reports. Let us know what God's doing in your life. Because we want to praise the Lord for that. Go ahead, Brother Mike. I believe you've got a testimony. Hold on a second. Come on. Absolutely. I love testimonies. I, I heard the good news the other day. I'm going to let you tell them. Praise the Lord. Mike is our head deacon. Go ahead and tell what God did. Yeah, a little over five years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, a rare form of cancer, um, an aggressive form. And there's no known cure for it but God. Yes. And I went Monday for a uh, scan, CT scan, and it turned up unremarkable. Uh, in other words, a good report. So I'd like to give God all the praise and honor and glory yes. for that. Hallelujah. And I'd like to thank you guys for all your prayers as well. Thank you. Hallelujah. That goes right along. Praise God. We want to hear about your praise reports just like Brother Mike's. When, when the Lord comes through, and he does, when the Lord comes through for you, We want to know that what we've been praying about, we want to rejoice with you because every single one of us has gotten up under that burden. We've gotten up under that and we have lifted you up, hallelujah, to heaven. And when God comes through, we want to hear. We want to praise the Lord with you. So send in those. Send in your prayer requests. We've got people that are going to be uh, going back and forth with you in real time. Those that will be commentating. We just we thank God for those here at the church that do that. And a special welcome to our um, all of our those that are watching from the Liberty Pentecostal churches all the way over in Ghana. We love you and welcome you into the house of the Lord tonight too. Amen. Did you come in God's house ready to worship? I hope you did. Shake off everything that's happened to you to this point in the week. Get it off your mind. You may have some very, very important things, you know, worth being concerned about that are going to happen towards the end of the week. But good news, the good news is, is that He is already there anyway. So don't worry about it. For the next few moments tonight, however long God has us here, get your mind off of you and get your mind on Him. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Get your mind off your problem and get it on Him. Hallelujah. If you love him in here, won't you lift that right hand if you're able and do this with me. Say, Lord, this is your house. This is your service. We will yield to you and we welcome you and invite you into this place. Have your way. Take complete and total control in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead and bless him. Remain standing if you're able. Let's bless the Lord in here tonight. I'm out.
because his name is going to be exalted, has been and will be exalted through eternity. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name above all names that at the name, come on, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of things in heaven and earth and under the earth. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's something about the name of Jesus that'll calm stress and anxiety and fear that will make it go away, that will break oppression. (laughs) Hallelujah. It's all by and through the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Bless Him again before you're seated this evening just for a moment. Just for a minute. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer in just a few moments. Um, We do want to remember the names again that are on the board this evening as we always do. Remember our nation, state, local leadership and the names you see that are running there. Um, Some prayer requests. We do want to say it's good to see Sister Mary back. I know her knee has been hurting her. Good report. I say good report. Nothing broken or anything like that. But uh, still in some pain. She needs God to touch her knee. How many of you know God can do it? I still remember many, many years ago, uh, my dad, in one week, it was amazing. Your knee just brought this to mind because years ago at the Chapel Grove Church of God, I was just a young teenager, maybe 13, 14 years old, and he had uh, torn, had a meniscus tear in his knee, and he was scheduled for arthroscopic surgery, and he told his class, he was teaching a Sunday school class at the time, he told them, he said, you know, he said, I'd... I just want to fast and pray and get close to God. And he told us at that time, he said it had nothing to do with his knee. He didn't think about that. But he even got me and my brother involved in on it. I was about 14 again, him about 17, around that age. And he said, guys, come on. He said, I want you, every night we would go back and uh, we fasted, you know, I don't know, about, you know, through the week we fasted periodically, turned the TV off or to little to no TV, just a week of consecration. And we took that time and we began to pray and we began to call on God. And, uh, and the story says I wasn't obviously in his Sunday school class uh, that, that following Sunday, the next one. But as I guess one of the teachers or whoever it was that took up the uh, prayer requests that morning, they began to do it as they always had. And a dear friend of his who's gone on to be with the Lord right now, uh, many of you may have even known him, Brother Rick Baker. He preached. He was our youth pastor for a while, and he ended up pastoring other places. He didn't say anything. He just reached over and put his hand on my dad's knee. When he did, Dad described it to us later on. He said it felt like something warm started running through his knee. 
He said his knee got real hot, real warm. And what's amazing, I've heard other people describe healing in that way. It doesn't have to happen that way, obviously, but I've heard it described in other ways. And he said, he said immediately he knew something had happened. And so, you know how the enemy does. He, he comes against your mind. And he picked it up just a little bit and he pulled it up. And he pulled it up, I guess, about parallel. And he thought there's no pain at all. And the old devil said, you don't have it high enough. The minute you break that point, you get a little bit higher. That thing's going to hurt. He said, well, I'm going to try it out. He got that thing. He said, I brought my knee up to my chest. Come on. He couldn't walk before that. He would hobble. He would uh, literally have to walk kind of sideways to get on the platform when he played his horn. God healed him instantly at that moment. Instantly. He never went to the surgeon. Didn't have to because he didn't have to go to somebody that practiced medicine. He went to the great physician. Why am I telling you that? Because God still does it. That's why I tell you that. Unto him who is able, hallelujah, to do exceedingly, abundantly, glory to God. Above all we can ask or think. Brother Mike has had a fantastic report. God still does it, doesn't he? Praise the Lord. Remember Kathy Spargo when we pray her back. Continue to remember Fred and Susan Wallace, please. Um, Brother Fred uh, has been sent home and this week they told him that several of his, his organs were shutting down. But I know God can reverse that. God can reverse that. They're at home today, got home today. Uh, but we need God. They need a miracle. But we serve a miracle working God. They need a miracle. So we're going to believe God for a miracle for Fred, Susan Wallace, Ralph Costner, Bobby and Mary Vinsel's son, Desi Martin, Brenda Fair, her son. We want to remember him and her also. Sister Jackie still praying for her. I do want to say this. Tim and Julie, uh, Kale's son-in-law is having an emergency surgery tomorrow. We want to remember uh, him when we pray and also one more thing Amy Raby and Nancy Bryant's father passed away uh, last night so we just want to remember that family just precious folks we love the Raby family and we love Sister Nancy Bryant so we want to remember them when we pray too we have a lot of needs but we serve a great big God right a lot of needs but a great big God who is never overwhelmed or taken off guard by what concerns us I'm going to ask you to stand again with me tonight just out of honor and reverence for God's word we call this again most everyone knows but I'm just going to say this for visitors so they understand why we do what we do I'm a big proponent of that I want people to understand why we do what we do we call this portion of our service taking our medicine now the reason we do that is taken strictly directly out of Proverbs chapter 4 where it says that the word of God is health to the entire body That word in the Hebrew, in the original language of the Old Testament, what it was written in, that word literally means medicine. So the word is medicine. The word of God is medicine to the whole body. And so you take prescription medicine. Many of you might take a multivitamin supplements of some sort. Well, we take the word of God. Until it gets down into the therapeutic level, until it gets down there, we can see it working and we can, we declare it. And if you don't feel anything the first time, you may not feel anything several times. It doesn't matter. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And we will declare it and stand on it until our situation, our bodies, whatever it may be, comes in line with the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. So we've taken healing scriptures out of the Word of God. Not all, but some. We declare them every service over our circumstances, over our bodies, over our illnesses. So I want you to do that with me tonight. If you're able, you'll see it on the board. If you're watching live, I want you to uh, say it with us too. You'll see it on the screen there. Let's go ahead and bless the Lord. Let's declare God's word. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. Bless the Lord. O my soul, and forget not all of your benefits, who forgives all of my iniquities, who heals all of my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles you have sent your word and healed me and delivered me 
from my destructions. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Because you were wounded for my transgressions. You were bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace was upon you. And by your stripes, I am healed. Bless him in this place. Bless him in this place. Now, if you're sick in your body, there's no need for you to wait until the end of service to get prayer. We want to pray for you now. So we want to ask you if you're sick in your body, just step out of your seat, come forward. If you would like to stand in for someone, we're going to urge you to do that. We welcome you to do that. While they're coming, I want to ask our prayer warriors, deacons, elders. The Bible says if there are any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Come on around. I want you to come in behind these individuals, help us pray. Again, I don't care if you're a visitor or not. If you're saved and you operate in faith, if you believe God, you're welcome to help us pray. Saved and operate in faith. Uh, for everyone else, if you're watching live, simply lay your hand on your own head. The Holy Ghost knows no logistical boundaries. He'll touch you where you're at. For everyone else, if you don't mind, just take that hand and stretch it forward tonight. You don't know what they need, but God does. And I just want you to stand in agreement with me tonight. Can you do it? Let's pray. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you, God, that you come and you revealed a name above all names. That we can call upon your name, God, and you will move it speedily. Lord, we speak your name over cancer tonight. Lord, we speak your name and we curse it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak your name over papers that need to be here and signed, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I declare it to be done in your name. Quickly, Lord, move in the situations. For everyone that is homebound and sick, I speak the name of Jesus over them, God. That your stripes that you took for our healing, God, for you to be the glory given for their healing in their bodies. God, I ask you to move for everyone, God, that is standing in this altar, that their needs will be met according to your word. According to your word, according to your promises, God, we stand on every one of them. We believe, God, that your word is true. You are the word, God, and you will not deny yourself. You will let your word and your promises be manifested for your people. God, move for those on Facebook watching us, God, the needs that they would have. I ask you to move, heal, deliver, and save to the uttermost, God. Lord, we stand in the hedge. God, we build that hedge around them. We stand in the gap, God, believing and knowing that there is nothing impossible with you. That you are an on-time God. That there's nothing slothful about the Almighty King. That there is no delays in the kingdom. There is no delays in your work. That it will all take its place according to your command. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in your name. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of what a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares. Oh! 
Remain standing if you would like. You can sit. Doesn't matter. Keep your minds on the Lord. Let's worship Him tonight with this praise team. Hallelujah. They say this mountain can be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. Oh, there is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will live. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. Come on, come on, hallelujah. There's so much power in your name.
We see and know what he's done in the past. We've been able to look back and know he's got a track record. Oh, yeah. He's got a track record. He's always come through. And the reason we believe him is because he said it. And every other time he said it, it's happened. So if he said it, we believe it. My God, I can't help but do that part again, David. Hallelujah. Lord, you said. Come on, say it like you mean. So I believe it. The reason I believe you is because said you said it. So it is the. You said it. You said it. So I believe it. You said it. So it is.
God's moving, lift your hands and worship Him. Lift up holy hands and worship Him because He's worthy. Hallelujah. Dear God, I know the flesh doesn't want to believe God for anything because it's contrary to the Spirit. But I'm praying that the Lord let that spirit man rise up in you right now. Because that spirit man will believe God for anything. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. My Lord, my Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Oh, God, we believe you. We believe you are who you said you are, and we believe those promises in your word are ours. We believe that all the promises in the book are ours. When you said that by your stripes we were healed, we believe you. When you said that your word has been sent to heal, hey, I tell say, my tongue my When you say your word has been sent to heal and to deliver us from our destructions, I believe you. I believe you. I thank you. And there will be tangible results from it. There will be tangible results from it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Break the unbreakable God we believe Yes we do God we believe for it From the impossible We'll see a miracle God we believe God we afternoon my Bible reading and read a story that I read a story that I've obviously preached no by heart but I read over it again Sister Julie it's a leper that came to him came to Jesus book of Matthew after the sermon on the mount leper came to him shortly after said if you will you can make me clean I know the Bible says that Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man and he said I will but if you read that in the Greek it actually says that his word that he was healed before he ever laid his hands on him it denotes that the wording healed him he went ahead and laid his hand on him there but brother Mike if you read the actual original Greek it was written in it denotes that just him saying I will he was healed before his hand was ever laid on him his word healed him When he said, I will, that's when the healing took place. I will. According to your word. 
You know, when Mary was told that she was going to carry a precious Christ child, Gabriel came to her, gave her this news. What was her response? Let it be according to your word. According to the word that was spoken, let it be. My God, do we have some people in here that believe God's word? We have some people that believe God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mary, what's God done for you tonight? No more pain in that knee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Give him praise. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Shall be behold in the name of Jesus. And don't you worry. Behold in the name of Jesus. Behold in the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unto him who is able. Unto him who is able. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. According to your word, let it be done. According to your word, let it be done. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you've done, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Come on, God's still moving in this altar. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry.
give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isn't he worthy? Hallelujah. You can be seated if you can, I guess. Praise God. Obey God. Go ahead. Of the world stand in all of you. Yeah. For he spoke. Come on. And it was done. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. There's the premise for us saying, Lord, you said it. Well, you said so it. it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. You got a situation that's moving. Come on. He commanded. Come on. And it stood fast. He says, The Lord brings the of nations to nothing. The council of the nations, so that means whatever's going on in our life, the situation, whatever's causing the trouble in our life, the Lord counsels to stand, His counsel stands forever. It says the plan of His heart is to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people He has chosen as His inheritance the Lord looks from heaven and he sees all the sons of men. Listen, tonight, all we have to do is believe in his word and stand on it. And it will be done. Amen. You said it. Go ahead and bless him. You said it. I believe it. Hallelujah. God's moving in an awesome way tonight, isn't he? Praise the Lord. Ushers, come on around, help me out tonight. Let's receive our evening tithes and offerings. As they're coming, if you'd like to give online, go to cloverliberty.com. Click the give button, you can do that. If you'd like to mail in any tithe or offerings, mail them into P.O. Box 38, Clover, South Carolina, 29710. Amen. Let's bless the offering tonight. Father, we do love you, praise you. Thank you for all that you're doing in this place. We bless you for all you're doing. We bless you that at your word, God, things are accomplished. So we ask you to bless this offering. Take it, multiply it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And we'll be careful to give you all praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. To me, he's become everything. Everything that I need The beginning, the end He's life's dearest friend to me He's become everything To me, He's become everything Everything He's everything that I need That I need The beginning more time. Come on around here, Brother T. I tell you, we love him. We love his family. Haven't they been such a wonderful addition to the church? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've been looking forward to this, so I want you to obey God. The Holy Ghost has been moving in here. You just obey God, my brother. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Amen. That's the best we can do tonight. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. I'm so grateful to be in God's house tonight. Glad I finally got the microphone because you was all over it. She was all over it. Y'all was all over it. Right in the message tonight. So I feel like, you know, God has given the word and we could have already went home, but I'm grateful for the opportunity tonight to preach God's word. I love him. I'm so thankful to be in God's house tonight. Uh, I don't often get to make it on Wednesday nights because I work such strange hours normally go in one two o'clock in the morning work till three four o'clock in the afternoon but thank God I made it tonight and I'm so grateful to be here if you will turn in your Bibles to Judges chapter 5 I'm not gonna sing tonight we we won't we won't go there tonight but maybe another night amen thank the Lord Judges chapter 5 verse 11 stand to your feet Thank the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord. 
Listen to what the Word says. It says, Far from the noise of the archers, among the watering places, there they shall recount the righteous acts of the Lord. The righteous acts for His villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord shall go down to the gates. I'd like to preach on this message tonight. It's time to recount. It's time to recount. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. We give you praise, honor, and glory for all things. You've been so good to us. You've blessed us so many times in so many ways, God, and tonight is no different. We thank you for allowing us to enter into your gates tonight, Lord, and Lord God, to feel your presence in this place, Lord. We thank you for what you've already done here, and God, we're grateful for what you're going to do, Lord. We thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to preach your word, Lord. We just ask, let your anointing flow. Lord God, I pray that I don't say anything in myself, but God, I just preach the word of God as you've given it to me. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen, and you can be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. I would love to give you my testimony tonight, but that's not what I'm able to do. The Lord gave me a message about two weeks ago, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here And I'm grateful that God gave me this message. I've preached many, I I don't know, I've been preaching since 1998. And I've preached a lot of places and um, I've preached a lot of messages. But as far as I know, I've never preached this one. So I'm grateful that God's still giving us fresh messages. Amen. Not that I ain't ain't, going to dip back into the bag every now and then, you know. But thank God for a fresh message. As I was reading the scripture and listening to the word, I hear this Come up in Judges chapter 5. There they shall recount the righteous acts of the Lord. And we've already been in this place tonight, and I've already heard of one that went to the doctor and no longer has cancer, where the doctor said, You've got cancer, but you don't have it no more. I've already seen the testimony of one rise up from the piano that was having trouble in their knee before they got here, but somehow God miraculously touched. Amen. I, I, I've seen so much in these 26 years of ministry. I've done come too far for you to tell me that God is still not moving. Amen. God is still moving in our midst and in our presence. And so oftentimes we forget to recount what God is doing. Amen. I'm not one of these people that believe what, what the Bible says was just for them back then. I'm just crazy enough to believe that God is still doing it in our day and hour. That God is still moving amongst His people in this day and this hour. That God is still healing the sick. He's still causing the blind to see. That He's still causing the deaf to speak. That we are still speaking in a new tongue. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. But oftentimes, we forget to recount these things. That's why in the old church we used to have testimony service where everybody would stand up and begin to testify about what God had done. And we see that from time to time where God's blessings is overflowing so much, Brother Mark, that I just can't help myself. i got to go tell somebody else about what He's done for me. Oftentimes we've been in situations and we've been in places where we didn't think we were going to get out. We didn't think we were going to make it out, but somehow God brought us out. And then I see somebody else come into the church, and they're in the same exact situation that I might have been or you might have been. And guess what? We have a word for them that God is still a deliverer, that God is still a healer, that God is still a Savior. Amen? Oftentimes, we don't recount the goodness of the Lord. Oftentimes we just sit there and we listen to everything everybody else is saying and we don't even bring Jesus up. Amen. But here we are in this place and we're here to praise and magnify the Lord. Now, I want to tell you that whenever I get around God's people, it's easy for me to, uh, to talk about the Lord. Anybody else? Whenever I get around God's people and God's moving, it's easy for me to talk about the goodness of the Lord. It's easy for me to, to remember all those things that God's done for me. Amen. All the things that God has done for me. But at times whenever I'm on my job and they talking like the world. And they're talking about all their exploits and what they've done and all the things they did that weekend. Sometimes I find myself a little, uh, I might not want to get in that conversation. 
But why not in that moment begin to recount the things of God? Amen. I remember as a young man of God, I used to do those things. But as I've got older in the Lord, for some reason, sometimes I'll hear them talking. And instead of getting in that stuff and and going ahead and putting Jesus in there, I'll step away for a moment. But I want to tell you it's time to recount the things of God. We find here in Judges chapter 5, this is the song of Deborah and Barak. And uh, they've done come out of a great war. They won the battle and now they're singing a song. And they're saying, when we get to the watering places and when we get down here, we're going to recount the goodness of the Lord. It is time for us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to begin to recount the goodness of God everywhere we go. If it's in church, so be it. But I want you to know God's given us grace when we get on our jobs that we can begin to recount the goodness of the Lord. Amen. When we're at Walmart and we're standing in that long line, I ought to be recounting the goodness of the Lord. I've done come too far. Amen, to give up now, and I've done come too far, and I've done seen too much to just sit back on it in this day and hour. The world will have a whole month where they can be proud to be whoever they are. I'm going to tell you what, 365, 12 months out of the year, I'm proud to be a Christian, amen. I'm proud to be who God created me to be, and there ain't no backing up on that. Amen. There's some churches in, in, in the land today, they're even sitting back. And they're saying, oh, well, we'll be okay with this or we'll be okay with that. At the end of the day, friend, what the Word of God says is what the Word of God says. I can't change it and you can't change it and I ain't looking to change it. I'm just going to begin to recount the goodness of God. I wish somebody would help me preach in here. we get out of here a little earlier. Amen? If you don't help me preach, we'll be in here a little longer. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to Psalms 124. Thank the Lord tonight. Psalms 124, verse 1. I love this scripture because it's not just the scripture where the preacher talks. So preacher, it's where the preacher talks and then the congregation responds. Now listen to what it says. It says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side... Let Israel, now that's y'all, amen, that's us. Now let me read that part again and then we're going to come in and we're going to go to the next. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. If it had not been for the Lord, I would not be here today. If it had not been for the Lord, you would not be here today. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, Brother David, I'd probably be in a grave somewhere or locked up or 20 kids on the way. I'm telling you today, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be where I am today. I've heard some of y'all's testimonies. Truth be told, if all the needles that had been shot up in this place, not here, but where you was before you got here, if all the needles had been, you might could fill up a Sunday school room. If all the liquor bottles that had been drunk, it could probably fill up the sanctuary today. All the weed that's been smoked. But if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I have ended up? I'm telling you today, God's goodness is still great in this place and we need to begin to magnify and lift up the mighty name of Jesus everywhere we go not just in church everywhere we go somebody ought to shout the victory today my goodness my goodness if it had not been for the Lord on my side do you know today that the devil wanted to put you out for the count anybody seen professional wrestling one two three And it's over. That ain't how real wrestling goes. When you get on your back in real wrestling, guess how many you get? One, and you're done. The devil thought he had you out. He thought he had you pinned. He thought he had you done for. He thought he had your mind so messed up that you would never become sane again. He thought he had you out for the count. But I want you to know, it's time for us to have a recount. Amen. No matter where you was, no matter where you've been, no matter the things you've done, you have not went too far that God's hand cannot reach you. My goodness. 
You have not come too far in this life that God cannot still touch you. Hey man, some of you are saying right now, but you don't know where I've been. Friend, you don't know where I've been. And if God could save somebody like me, and God could deliver somebody like me, then who are you to say God can't do it? My God works in the impossible. My God works in the impossible. My God breaks the unbreakable. You can't tell me I done come too far and I done seen too many people that has been delivered and set free. My goodness. I'm telling you what the Lord has done in me and my life in this short lifespan. I'm 43 years old. The things that God has done and worked out in me. Man, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Man, we've been messed up. We've been broke, busted, disgusted. But in this moment, I'm going to praise Him for everything I got, Brother Mark. I mean, I'm going to give God the praise. We, we come up in a little single wide trailer. Me and that, that beautiful woman over there got married when we was 18 years old. Didn't have a clue about the world. But you know what? God has brought us a mighty long way. And I stand here before you today. I'm not perfect, but I'm delivered. I'm set free. My mind is right. Amen. Come on now. I've got peace like a river. I've got something in my soul that I know no matter what I'm doing here. Amen. There's an eternity waiting for me and because of that brother Michael I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to recount the days that God has blessed me amongst the heathens hallelujah I ain't going to wait till I get to church man I work with a bunch of heathens too if they was here tonight I'd tell them that i tell them that at work Amen. They know they're heathens and they don't mind being heathens but you know what I'm going to be the man of God that I need to be even in that place and they think it's crazy whenever I start talking about the goodness of God around all them construction workers. It's all right. If God had done what He's done for me and them, they'd be talking about Him too. And shame on them if they wasn't. Amen? But I'm telling you, the Lord's been good to me and mine. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Where would I be? Now listen to what it says. It said, when men rose up against us, then they, they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul if it had not been for the Lord on my side. And let the congregation say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Hallelujah. Amen. Turning your Bibles to Judges chapter 8, verse 30. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm putting the sound booth back there and the audio visual people to work, you know. I, they said, what scriptures you got? I said, I got all kind of them. I mean, you know, I got a whole bunch of them. But I said, we'll see where it goes. Amen. Judges chapter 8. Now listen to this. This is the problem. The problem here is that we recount the goodness of God in the sanctuary, but we forget when we get home, we got to recount the goodness of God even to our children. Can I tell you, and this is such a sad truth and shame on me, uh, shame on parents, but you know, sometimes you can drag your kids to church every Sunday. You can drag them to Sunday school and they still don't know the Bible. You could bring them to church every Sunday, every prayer meeting, all the revival services you want to, but I'm telling you, sometimes they still are not hearing the Word of God. They're still not seeing the goodness of God. And I even talked to a young man the other day who's been in church a long, long time, and he, he told me, he said, yeah, but I'm not seeing God move like that anymore. Well, you might want to come to Clover on Sunday. Right? I mean, come on, come to Clover on a Wednesday night, you'll see God moving, right? Amen. But a lot of times we'll drag them to church, but we'll forget when we get home to recount the things of God. It's sad, but it's true. 
Oftentimes we'll sit in front of a TV, we'll go to church on Sunday, and then we'll just sit there all through the week in front of a, a, a TV and never talk to our kids on a personal level about the things of God. We'll never talk to our brothers or our sisters because we know it might be a point of contention around the holidays. Better not bring up Jesus on Thanksgiving. Somebody might get mad. Well, they don't mind bringing up all their garbage when we get together, do they? I didn't get many amens. It's all right. You don't want to offend your, your home folk. I get it. But the truth be told, we let them talk about everything they want to talk about. But man, somehow when we start talking about the goodness of God, they want to shut that down real quick. Or they want to get their little to-go plate and get on out the door, right? I'm still going to talk about the goodness of God. Amen. But even in our own homes. Now listen to what the scripture says. Judges chapter 8 verse 34. Thus the children of Israel did not remember the Lord their God who had delivered them from the hands of all their enemies on every side. Now I could go through the book of Judges time and time again how God would raise up a judge and this judge would come in and rule over the people and deliver them out of the hand of the enemy. But whenever it was all said and done, Brother Dusty, whenever it was all said and done, somehow there was a generation that would rise up that would forget about God. They would forget about the things of God, the ways of God, and they would begin to follow after strange God, after the Baals or the Ashtoreths, as the Bible says. But I want you to know, there was a time where they heard about God, but now they have forgotten. I hate to say this, but it, it is the truth. There are some churches that have forgotten about the things of God. Not this one. Thank the Lord, I want to be in a church that believes the Bible. I want to be in a church, Brother David, where God is being uh, uh, glorified, magnified in everything we do. I want to be in a church where it ain't about one man, but it's all about Jesus. Amen? I don't want to be in a church where it's all about the praise team or the piano player or the guitar player or just the preacher. Those people let you down. God will never let you down. These people had forgotten about the things of God and the goodness of God. Friend, I don't want to ever forget about what He's done for me. It brings to my mind the song, Oh, whenever I think about the Lord and all He's done for me, it makes me want to shout. I want you to know today that God is not done blessing His people. God is still delivering people and God is still saving people and setting the captive free. Do you believe that tonight? Amen. I'm not going to let them forget it. Don't let them forget we must recount the goodness of God. Not just when we're sitting in Sunday school. And I don't know how many of you make it to Sunday school. We, we we're able to come every now and then. I'm thankful because when we get in there and those women begin to teach, and sometimes they don't even get to the teaching without the Spirit of God moving in there. Am I right? Amen. And God begins to move. I want you to know that's a great time to talk about the goodness of the Lord. But I want you to go tell it on your jobs. I want you to go tell it at Walmart. I want you to go tell it when you're at the parade. I want you to tell it because if God's been that good to you, wouldn't you want somebody else to get it? Man, I sure do. Now I want you to know something. We're talking about the recount. The devil will always try to keep you down for the count. But it's always time for the recount. That's what the devil fears. He fears and trembles. Not when we begin to lift up ourselves and look at what I've done. Look at how good I am. Look at how well I can play. Look at how well I can sing. Or, oh, I preach and so many come to the altar. Do you know without God I can do nothing? Without God, you can do nothing. And except God build the house, those that labor, labor in vain. Do you know the devil does not tremble when you begin to witness and testify to somebody about how good you've been? The devil does not tremble whenever I get up and say, oh, I preached this message at Wednesday night at Clover and it went so well. The devil don't care. I mean, you know, he don't tremble over those things. But whenever I say God was in the house and God began to move and God began to deliver and God began to set free and God began to heal, that's when the devil begins to tremble because God is recognized as almighty. 
Paul said it like this. He said, I don't want to know anything amongst you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Friend, everything else don't really matter, does it? The devil does not tremble when we glorify ourselves. The devil trembles when we glorify God. Listen to what it says in Psalms chapter 71, verse 15. It said, My mouth shall tell of your righteousness. Now, I love this. Psalms 71, verse 15. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day. Listen to this. For I do not know their limits. Now, Listen to what the ESV said. It said you can't number them. You can't number them. You might try to put a number on how many blessings God's given you, but I want you to know you can't number them because God is still pouring it out. God is still ministering to His people, and they are unnumberable. Amen. What God is doing. Oh, I wish somebody would help me preach tonight. Listen to me. God is still moving, and God is still blessing, and I can't count them all, Brother Mark. Mm. Man, when the old timers would get up, pastor, when the old timers would get up and they would tell us about the miracles that they saw, my drool. Man, why can't we see something like that? Oh, oh whenever they get up and talk about the thousands coming to the altar, I would drool. Why can't we witness something like that? You know why? We just haven't believed enough. We haven't sought God enough. We haven't gotten the prayer closet and made up our mind. I'm coming to church and I'm going to get a hold of God today. I, I haven't really sought Him like I needed to. Those men of God, they'd steal away and they'd pray. Sometimes we don't do those things that they were doing. Sometimes if you want to see a move of God, you got to do some, uh, some unordinary things. Amen. I remember we locked ourselves in the church. Uh, said we're going to do it for a week. Yeah, we was young, man. You know, you know how you are when you get saved and you're young. Oh, yeah, we locked ourselves in the church. We ain't coming out till God moves. I can smell Oreo cookies from a mile away. Man, I, I could hear the sun drop tab popping open. I was like, oh, my word. Man, you know, you're in there, and I ain't been in there but two hours. <laughs> I'm already smelling it, you know. I know I'm in trouble. Oh, but sometimes you've got to get away with the Lord, amen? And you've got you to just put everything else aside, and you've got to say, God, I, I need you. How many of y'all have ever been desperate? I know some of you were desperate for a date at prom. I know some of y'all were desperate for other. I'm talking about desperate with the Lord. Amen. I've been desperate with the Lord. And it was a time in my life, and I, I told you, I, can't, I, I don't have time to tell you my testimony tonight. But there was a time in my life where things happened that, I mean, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I'd be at today. But I want you to know there is time for us to recount the goodness of God. Can I get a show of hands in this place? How many have been blessed by the Lord at some point in your life? How many have been blessed and you feel like, I need to share this blessing with somebody else? Amen. I'm telling you, if you've got breath in your lungs today, God's given it to you to magnify His name, to magnify His goodness in all that He's done. Amen. God is still moving amongst His people. But listen to this. Psalm 71. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day, for I do not know their limits. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. Amen. I've got just two more scriptures. Amen. Go to Philippians chapter 3. I just want to say this. Amen. I didn't give them a scripture, did I? I'm trying to give them some work here. Philippians chapter 3 and 13. Now, I'm a basketball dad. Many of you know Tucker plays basketball. Man, we go all over the place with him playing basketball. And I get around some of them other dads, and we begin to recount the things we used to do. The things we used to do that ain't none of us could do now. You know, I know... I. 
Listen, I'm a preacher, and I ain't going to lie in the pulpit, but there was a time where I could dunk a basketball. I know what y'all thinking. Ain't no way. I didn't look like this way back then, okay? So y'all keep that to yourself. There was a time, Pastor, there was a time where I went to county track meet for high jump, but I didn't look like this. <laughs> But I get around all these basketball dads, and you know how you know how you do. You talk about the good old days and what you used to do, and how you shot the three pointer to win the game, and how you how you did this, and how you shook somebody. And I've been around all them softball players that you talked about how many home runs you hit this season, knowing it was church league, and there ain't nobody supposed to be keeping track. Yeah, but some of you did. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't got to tell me because I already been around you even though I ain't been around you. My best friend's here tonight, Dusty Helms. We played football together uh, for about 10 years, and I used to keep up with all my stats, and we were just playing pickup football down at uh, uh, Ferguson Park. And it's like, what are you doing keeping up with your stats? Nobody cares about it out there, but you know how you do. I was with my brother-in-law a few weeks ago out fishing, he caught the biggest fish I ever seen come out of Lake Wiley, and I'm telling you, we're going to talk about that for years to come. We will. Dusty works with him at the barber shop, and he's heard all the stories about how big that fish was. 75 pounds. That's why, hey, any fisherman in the house, you don't bring scales with you. That way you can just make up whatever you want it to weigh, right? Amen. But listen, truth be told, We'll find ourselves reminiscing about the good old days, who we used to be. Now, you wouldn't want to know who I used to be. My wife knew who I was way back then. I thought I was some thug. Walk around with my pants sagging, no floppy hair. Walked around with my shirt off. Always got a mean look on my face. Thinking, I, oh, and I had, a, I had a strut, Brother Mark, just like that. Couldn't get nowhere too fast because you got a strut. So everybody see you walking, right? That's the truth of it. But listen, who I was is not who I am right now. There's no way I could be the man I am now trying to stay the man I used to be. And see, that's the problem. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things are made new. Old things have passed away. You're not that man anymore. You're not that woman anymore. And I want you to know today, the devil's trying to bind some of you up. To say, you used to be. You used to be. Yeah, come on now. Some of y'all have been bound up by who you used to be. You're not that person anymore. Amen. If you've been saved and bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, do you know that you're not your own anymore? But that you've been purchased with, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you're not that person anymore, no matter who you used to be. If you've given it all to Jesus, you're not there anymore. And I want you to know today, do not let the devil try to keep his foot on your throat and tell you you can't be just because of who you used to be. Now I want you to know, according to the scriptures here, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. All right. Now, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to be bound up by who you used to be, but I also don't want you to forget where you came from. You don't know how much of a blessing it was to me to hear the testimony of how this church got started all those years ago by just a little small group of people that seemed like they were scattered about and somehow God brought them together. And look at what God is doing in our midst even right now. I'm telling you, that's a blessing to me to hear where God brings you from and where God's taking you. And listen, Clover is not done growing. Amen. Clover Liberty Pentecostal Church, we are not done growing. Amen. The pastor was telling me the other day about trying to go out into areas in this community and begin to proclaim the name of Jesus and preach the gospel and help people with their needs. I'm telling you, just look and see what God's going to begin to do. 
Amen. Because I see it on Sunday morning whenever I come in. And if you don't get here on time, you're going to be sitting in the back or maybe uh, 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 trying to squeeze in somewhere. Amen. Sunday night's a little easier to get in. But it's coming. But I don't want you to forget where you came from. Don't forget where you came from because you don't know how many people you can help that are in that same situation right now. I've been in a place, I've been serving the Lord for, since 1996. I've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ since 1998. And there's still been some times, Brother Dusty, that my mind has tormented me. I prayed. I sought the Lord. It seemed like my prayers couldn't get past the ceiling. It, it seemed like nothing I could do was getting there. But you know what I had to do? Just keep on praying. The last thing you can do is give up. That's not even on the table. That's not even the option. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today. When you're on the verge of giving up, recount the goodness of God. And if you ain't got nothing to praise God for, please come to me. Come to one of these others. Uh, 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 some of us need to start doing a better job of talking about how good God is and how good God has been and how good God will be. Don't forget where you came from. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet. Listen to what the Word of God says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I'm going to tell you, when I got saved, Thank God. I, I grew up Pentecostal. My mom and dad drug us to church. I didn't go willfully, but I, I got drugged there, you know. But they took us all over the place, listening to all different kinds of Pentecostal preachers. And I remember my dad, I mean, he just loved the word of the Lord, and he wanted to go wherever the Spirit of God was moving, he wanted to go. And I remember whenever I got saved, I wasn't with my mom and dad. I got saved in that little country church and I gave my life to the Lord that night and I said, Lord, I don't know what you want to do with me, but whatever it is, I'm here. I mean, I grew up in a, in a house where my dad prayed all the time. I didn't even know how to pray. That's sad. Not that it was my mom and dad's fault, but you know, I didn't even know how to really pray and seek God. But I gave my life to Him that night and I began to seek after the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know I had a Pentecostal experience. Not, not, not something that man made up. I'm talking about when the Spirit of God literally come and dwelled inside of me and there was a voice that come out of me that was not my own. It was a language I didn't know. But I began to speak it. I want you to know today, I, I'm not... That's not where I'm trying to go with that. But what I am trying to say is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will give you the power to be a witness for Him. He will give you the power when you're, you're, you're shaking in your shoes at Walmart because God's telling you, you need to talk to this person. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. It will give you the courage just to open your mouth and God will begin to give you the words. You say, well, I don't know the Bible that well. You don't need to know the Bible that well just to talk about the goodness of God. Now, you need to know the Bible well enough so you can start fighting the enemy. But, hey, begin to recount the goodness of God. And I want you to know, you're going to see great things. We need to begin to talk about it at home. We need to talk to our children about the goodness of God and the things that we've seen. Do not let this experience die. Now the Word of God, I love it with everything I have. I got saved and I put a Bible under my arm and I went to high school the next day. I got saved on a Sunday, went carrying my Bible on a Monday and my friends thought I'd lost my mind. And I had lost my mind because it wasn't the same tormented mind that I had on that Sunday before I got saved. God changed my mind just in an instant. He changed it. I love the Word of God, but I'm praying the Word of God will be mixed with our experience. 
that when we come into His house and we genuinely seek Him, that He will meet us in this place. And whenever we meet Him in this place, that we will experience things that are sometimes unexplainable. That we will experience things in this place that the Bible is not just written words, but it becomes alive. It is time for us to recount the goodness of God. Amen. As they begin to sing, the altars are open. And I'm just going to ask you tonight, if you need anything from the Lord, I know many have already come to the altar, but if there's something you're needing, specifically salvation, then come. If it's a healing in your body, come. If it's deliverance, then come. We will pray the prayer of faith over you. And we will believe God. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word tonight. God, we thank you that you have ministered to us, Lord. We thank you that you have spoken your word. And we just ask you, Lord God, that the seed be planted tonight. Let the water come along and water it, Lord, and bring forth much fruit in its season. I'm praying, Lord God, for the lost tonight to get saved. I'm praying for the sick to be healed. And I'm praying for the afflicted to, to be delivered, Lord. I'm praying for the addict to come tonight. The addict to come and be delivered and set free from their addictions. Listen to me. Look at look 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 at me. The Lord just spoke this. There's a, there's somebody that has an addiction in here. I don't know what it is, and, and that's not my business. The Lord said if you come tonight, you'd be delivered. That's all I know. All right, so I leave it in the Lord's hand. But tonight, there's somebody that has an addiction in this place. If you come tonight, tonight's your night. You can be completely delivered from it and set free. I, I don't. You could ask my wife, others that know me. Whenever I, I do not speak things like this, just out in the open so tonight should not as they sing don't leave this place without getting what the Lord has in store for you thank you Lord praise you Jesus Praise the Lord. You know, the early disciples, they weren't scholars. They didn't have their doctorates in theology or anything like that. But they said one thing. They said, we can only speak of the things we have seen and the things we've heard. God's moving in here, folks. He's not done. Stretch your hands this way. God's moving in here. He's not done tonight. Hallelujah.
worship Him in here. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bless the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost. Can you give Him a wave offering just for a minute? Don't be in a hurry. Give Him a wave offering for how good He is. Recount what He's done for you. Glory to God. I like Psalm 71. He could have read that for about 10 straight minutes. I will tell of His salvation and righteousness because I can't, I can't, there, there's not a limit on it. I can't find its limit. Hallelujah. My God, God's still moving. God's still moving. Glory to God. Go ahead and bless Him. Praise God. Glory to God. I'm going to tell of your salvation and your righteousness because there are no limits to it. Hey, isn't it wonderful what God's doing? He's still moving. He's still moving. Don't get in a hurry. Hallelujah.
that's worthy. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for the things I cannot see. You've been a shelter in the storms of life, a shield surrounding me. And I'm thankful for the mercy you provide. When you could have gone and walked away, you stayed a thousand times. Amazing. case, a hopeless case, an empty place, if not for grace. Praise the Lord. Have you enjoyed Brother T. Robinette tonight? Hallelujah. My God. It won't be the last time, Lord willing. I can tell you that. Praise God. Amen. Bless me tonight tell of his goodness. It's not enough to tell it in here. You've got to tell it out there. Amen. Tell it everywhere. But praise God for what he's done in here tonight. Make sure to get to Brother T and his whole family. Let them know how much you appreciate them and how much the word of God has blessed you tonight. Again, don't tell of your goodness. Tell of his. Amen. All hearts and minds clear tonight. If so, let's be dismissed in prayer. Father, we do love you. We praise you. Thank you for your presence in this place that has been evident. We bless you. We thank you for what you've done. Lord, you've touched Mike Pete and you have uh, healed his body, given him a good report. You have touched Mary Howe and touched her knee and made her well. And Lord, the others that have come to this altar, thank you for the word of knowledge that was given tonight. Thank you for the word of knowledge and the one that God that obeyed and is delivered, hallelujah, according to your word, that is delivered and set free from bondage and addiction. We thank you. We give you praise for all of this. Lord, I pray a special hedge of protection around everyone here and everyone under the sound of my voice. Keep them all out of harm's way. Keep them all in perfect health so that they can live and not die and declare your works in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. You may be dismissed. Again, shake hands, shake hands, hug some necks. Let everyone know how much you love them. Hug your brother and sister tonight. You may be dismissed.